boys have done all right tonight. Towards line. Orchard picks it up now. Long and low towards Schwoss. Pretty quiet night for him. Maxfield away. 65 out. Into the pocket he goes. Free, Look, free comes kick. charging, but there is a free kick. A whistle down the ground. And who's going to take it? Well, it's paid to Tony Lockett. Um, Shanahan restricted him as he went for yeah. the ball. And... The well, signal was given was for holding by the arm. So is this going to be the moment for Tony Lockett? A lot of extra movement on the ground down here, Sandy. Five yes. times he's kicked 100. Fans are flocking to the fence. Lockett is on 99. The most he's kicked in one year is 132. That was in 92 with St Kilda. Came to Sydney, we did 110 in 95 and 121 in 96. Injuries and suspension cost him last year. Is this going to be his century tonight? 25 metres out, 45 degree angle, here they come, and he's done it. Well, I don't know what you think about it, Sandy, but this is absolutely ridiculous. There's, play, there's people not even running towards Tony Lockett. Just wanting to get on the turf. Actually, yes. Melbourne fans have, have gone for the Melbourne team in the middle of the ground. There are hundreds of them there. This the other is... thing, it, it can be dangerous. That's right. A really good idea for the Melbourne team to huddle around the centre circle altogether because then it, it at least isolates them from the possibility that they could get uh, get injured if somebody runs past them and uh, trips over them or whatever. Johnny Rosso, know. where are the umpires? Well, I don't know, mate. <laughs> what other elite sport in the world would allow the fans to invade the pitch like this? Well... Is there any real problem with it? Well, the game stops. Well, anything it's can been happen. a tradition for a, for as long as we've played the game that the game stops. Well, it was a yeah, celebrate one of the great feats of yeah, uh, a one of the great champions. It, it was a tradition when it was a suburban game of football, but it's a, a national elite sport now. It's yeah. just ridiculous that a game can stop because of this. Well, you've got two options. You put the barbed wire fence up or you let this to happen. I and think that's and right, it would be a tragedy if the barbed wire fence went up. I think we'll have no, this. It's, it's a matter of education, surely. Well, there was a sign on the scoreboard uh, for a substantial amount of time before the game asking patrons not to run onto the ground should well, Tony Lockett well, kick his 100th well, goal. Yeah, that but worked, didn't but it? Every, everybody has, agree, has, has disregarded that. So given right. that they disregard that sort of warning... The only, uh, the only solution is that, Jared said, the fence, and I, I think that would be terrible if the I'm fence bit, was put up. I'm a bit with Jared. I don't think it's uh, no, I don't any see great it. drama. I mean, they are leaving the ground now. OK, we've but lost two or three minutes. Kids you've will to, remember that Sandy, forever. Kids Sandy that ran on the ground tonight will remember that forever, which is fantastic. Danny but, Troy Cook is uh, a bit distressed down here. He's now coming off the ground. Looks like the ankle... Uh, He's no good, and uh, he'll be replaced at the moment. But he's just, uh, just slowly walking off the ground here. Yeah, got him. We've got him. Thanks, Dip. He obviously had jabs in his ankle at half time. They didn't work. But uh, the other thing you've got to consider is the momentum that Melbourne had is just effectively snuffed out now. It doesn't happen very often, I know. But you can't. So you cannot say it's attractive or. Well, there's about uh, 20,000 people out there that also, uh, fit. I think they would think it's attractive. As John said, they're going to remember it forever. They'll probably come out with a oh, song well, the day that well, uh, Tony Lockett kicked his 100th goal in the MCG. But, I mean, the bottom line is that there's no way of stopping it effectively. But half of them didn't go anywhere near Tony Lockett. Well, the half of them were Melbourne supporters wanted to so, go over so, and so touch, what, touch what's Viney the, on the backside. What's the benefit of that? <laughs> the good news is the umpires are safe in the middle. <laughs> Good on you, Dippo. I think we might, uh, while I start to clear it, we'll have another look uh, at goal number 100. This is the sixth time that Lockett has done it. Three times when he was with St Kilda, and now three times with Sydney. It was actually during the second quarter that uh, I think Sydney needed the goal from Tony Lockett. Just to drop the momentum that they Melbourne had built up. And as you said, Cornsy, this is uh, going to rob Melbourne of some of the uh, momentum they have. Well, They're just 31 points down now. Sydney, they're still well and truly in the game. And you've got kids still running out of the ground. You've got people having end-to-end -end kicks on the ground. I mean, if this is... Uh, if this yeah. <laughs> we agree with you, Cornsy, but how do you stop it? Well, I think an education program is important. Plus, if you have the security people like you do at finals time in a game like this, it just... Yeah. It acts as a... As a um, well, you would, sorry, get people, you would get people injured if you had security people there. Well, let's just spare a thought for Tony Lockett now because he has joined uh, Jason Dunstall as the only other player to have six centuries in his career. Peter Hudson had five. Nuts Coventry had four. Gary Ablett 
and Peter McKenna three apiece. Yes, I suppose we are overlooking this. what a fantastic effort it has been. And you wonder what sort of uh, physically draining effect that is also with the crush of people around you. Also, Jeff White's uh, preparing to come back on and, and Jimmy Stein's coming off. And uh, why don't Tony Lock on his 100th? Well, you think if Sydney are going to win this game, the next five minutes is uh, all important. In fact, uh, the next 14 seconds is all important because that's all there is before three-quarter time. Well, they've only had one meeting under lights. <laughs> Sydney won that. But they're down, what, 31 points. Certainly in today's game, not impossible. Maybe should they should take three-quarter time early, Jerry. Would have been a fair option. And 14 <laughs> seconds to go. What's the point of starting? I love it again? when you get a B in your bottom, <laughs> Cornsy. I love it. Well, are you going to, we may as well ask you, are you going to coach again next year, Cornsy? Everyone else is no, going to have a crack at it. Not yet. Not next year. Not yet. Oh, the year after. <laughs> There he is, Tony Lockett. And the only thing going through his mind at the moment is uh, how on earth is uh, his side down by such a margin and how can he get back into it? Well, there's an enormous roar here. Yeah, the police have grabbed somebody on the other side. No, well, there's people who are just deliberately trying to stay on the ground. That's the problem. And they're being encouraged by the crowd. And the umpire practising his bounce in the centre of the ground. I've never seen that before, Josh. Oh, lots of guys practice their bouncing. It's probably uh, one way to get focused back on what you're about to do. And there he goes again. Mitch is having a couple. They've both gone straight too. <laughs> Hope he hasn't used them all up. <laughs> By Chris Mitchell chatting there with Darren Breswell after having a couple of warm-ups. Todd Viney, Johnny Stevens. So that'll be a load off Tony Lockett's mind. The pressure valve released. I'd say, uh, just on that, Sandy, I reckon Tony Lockett's just asked if he could have the footy because yeah. he's had a fairly long conversation with uh, with Hayden Kennedy and I would suggest that he's asked if he can have the footy. You've got a great collection this year. I think yeah. he's kicked, what, uh, over 10 goals three or four times, so... Yep. He'd almost have to catalogue them, catalog them, Dipper. So what does happen to the ball if he didn't get it, John? You're the, what do you do with the ball when you take it back to the umpire's room? Uh, the, the club representative comes and takes the balls back. Yeah. yeah, they didn't get a chance to um, they didn't get a chance to signal and wave, and you'll see there the goal go. up by now. Yep. Highly unusual. Okay, we'll now uh, see wave. the goal waved. <laughs> the longest goal in history. It would have been 99.9. <laughs> and you reckon that's good for footy, Sandy? <laughs> I don't think it hurts. Go down to the ground, Dipper. Thanks very much, Sandy. We'll uh, tell you not the result you wanted, but uh, congratulations on another bag full of 100 goals. Yeah, I guess a little bit disappointing, but uh, they were just too good for us on the night, Dipper. Um, yeah, it just doesn't make it quite as nice as if we had a one, but yeah. anyway, we've just got to go on with it now. And on your own, on your old teammate as well, have a bit of a chat to him the, oh, yeah, the game? Yeah, he's a great player. You know, he served up to me all night. Um, you know, we just weren't good enough at the end of the day, Dipper. Uh, so we're just going to have to go and have a good thing about it this week and come out with all guns blazing as Collingwood now. You had a couple of early shots in the first quarter. A bit nervous about the... Oh, no, it wasn't nervous. Nothing like that. Just, mate, we're going to miss one every now and again, don't you? Did you ask the umpire to keep the ball again? Uh, I think the real ball, someone's kept it in the crowd, but... Uh, uh, I'd probably keep it if I had a one, but anyway. I know you're disappointed about the uh, the loss, but uh, magnificent if the six times you've kicked 100 goals. Well done, buddy. Thanks, mate. A great achievement indeed, and uh, they'll bounce back.